All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do something that I didn't realize people knew about, and it's kind of been explained to me that maybe not everyone is as familiar with this term as myself. Growing up, I'd like to think of myself as a utility player. I used to play center back, right back, left back, anywhere really where the manager at the time would want me. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. Clearly, I didn't realise that so many people were unfamiliar with the phrase utility player. But before we jump into this, if you are new, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments section below as well, once I've told you how they work, who some of them are, and why they are so important to a team. Let me know who is your favourite player. That is what I want to hear. Who is your favourite utility player? So to paint a picture for you guys right now, I'm going to go with probably the two most common of sort of our generation that aren't going into the previous one and don't come into this new wave of players. Um, so you can get a key example of that. And I believe probably two of the most important ones are James Milner and Ashley Young. I've gone with them, number one, because they're English. They've played in the Premier League for ages. We all know who James Milner and Ashley Young are. So these two players are players that can play anywhere. And to you guys who maybe are a little bit younger than myself, you might not realise that James Milner was once a right winger who is now a centre mid or quite often a left back for Liverpool. And Ashley Young used to play as a in behind the striker with Emil Heskey. And that feels a world away from the left back and occasionally right back that he has become in recent years. And so these players are players that can play anywhere on the pitch. But why are these players, these types of players, your Ashley Youngs, your James Milner's, your Wayne Rooney's, your Zanetti's, why are these players so important to a team? Well, the first thing is, I think it starts at the lowest, lowest level. So if you are lucky enough still to be in grassroots football, or you are still lucky enough to be a player who is young and developing, this is one of the things I would really, really recommend you doing is playing in different positions. Because although it might seem frustrating, for you guys uh, at the time, I can understand you want to go score goals, you want to do this, you want to do that. There's plenty out there on the pitch for you to do in your position already. But you, under you get a better knowledge of the game and how players play if you play in that position because you realise what the other attackers have to do to get in that position and it helps you in your position in the first place. And so a classic example of this is someone who thrived a completely opposite position was Dion Dublin. Dion Dublin was one of the best um, strikers in of his generation. He won Premier League Golden Boots and he was a fantastic player. But, but, but towards the back end of his career and in different occasions, he... He did play at centre half, and you—it's easy to think, "Oh, well, that'd be funny. Why? Why would you do that?" But yes, he might not have the technical ability of slide tackling and stuff like that. But the reading of the game really helps, and being able to play in these different positions, it does really help. Um, a classic example of this is someone like a Reese James right now. Reese James is someone who. For Wigan has played in central midfield and for Chelsea is now playing at right back but because he is able to play in those two positions he know what he knows where the danger comes from in that center of midfield and he knows where the comes from on the wing and it helps players learn patterns of play and what really well what really football is all about it's never straightforward but there is often relatable patterns of play that happen you can see stuff happening down your right hand side you think I've seen that happen before here when I was in centre mid. How did the right back deal with it? And you learn from other people. You learn from people who are maybe better in your position at this current moment in time. And you learn and it gives you a fantastic understanding. The second reason why these players are so important is because you can play a range of systems without worrying. And a player I can really think of in terms of this is Zinchenko. Zinchenko is a or he was, a centre attacking midfielder when he joined Manchester City and now he plays more commonly at right back and he still does fill in at sort of left mid and centre mid if need be but it allows Manchester City to play these different formations and not have to worry that they're 
that Benjamin Mendy's out injured and so they're going to have to shove someone else in. He's been able to adapt, he's learnt this position very well and he's become somewhat of a utility player, maybe not to the same extent of James Milner who could literally play left mid, centre mid, right mid, right wing, left wing, left back. It's not quite the same but even still it is it's something that can really help and it, it means as well you don't have to worry in the dying embers of the game if for example, Dion Dublin is on the pitch and his team are 1-0 up, then they can move him back to centre-back and have an extra centre-back and know someone who's going to do well. Another reason why these players are so important is because it helps when someone was injured. James Milner had to fill in at left-back for ages through injuries, through Andy Robertson not being ready to play for Liverpool, he had to fill in for ages. There were so many reasons why James Milner had to play in at left back. But Jurgen Klopp didn't have to worry. He was like, don't worry, I've got James Milner. It'll be fine. And all was fine, realistically. All was fine. And that was the importance. You can play anyone, anywhere. Mikel Antonio, another fantastic example. When the strikers were scoring, Mikel Antonio dropped to right mid or even to right wing back or right back because he had that capability and he knew how to do it. And when they had a shortage there, it was more than a viable option. And now he's a fantastic striker as well because he knows how a defensive brain works. I'll go through a few more examples because why not? Let me know who is your favourite out of these guys. These are just a few. I'm sure I've missed quite a lot of. Philip Lahm playing in midfield when he was um, older. He used to play on the left-hand side as well um, I'm sure he could have done a job at centre back when needed Florenzi another fantastic player now at PSG I believe he is been at Roma for ages and playing in different positions and centre mid right back right mid a very fantastic player as well Rooney of course I think I mentioned him earlier but Wayne Rooney could have played left wing striker centre forward cam centre mid and towards the latter stages of his career played defensive midfield and one of the players who is still playing at that top top level right now David Alaba it would have seemed berserk sort of five ten years ago when this lad was playing at left midfield to say he could ever play at centre back but he made that transition to centre mid and then made that transition to left back and so He's now one of the best centre-backs in the world and it's absolutely amazing. So let me know, guys. What do you guys think to a utility player? Who is your favourite utility player? And those are some of the reasons why, as well, we still have utility players. And I really hope the art of the utility player, I've said that so many times now, doesn't die out because I think they're a fantastic addition to any squad and everyone loves a James Milner, don't they? Everyone loves a James Milner. Anyway, that concludes today's video. If you have enjoyed, be sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.